What's up, Ground Sounds listeners? We have a very, very, very special interview today with Tay's Not Dead. He is a Columbus, Dayton, uh, Ohio, born and raised um, rapper, producer, manager, everything like that. He's had his hand in a lot of amazing projects. Um, so it's amazing to have him here. We appreciate having I'm you glad on, I'm Tay. Here. I'm here. Hell yeah. Um, so getting right into it, Tay, tell us a little bit about yourself and who Tay's Not Dead really is. All right, so, man, I don't know. You probably have to go real far back. Um, go ahead. We got some time. But uh, music enthusiast, I guess, for real. Like, I did a lot of stuff uh, with, like, Vans Warped Tour, uh, toured with bands since I was, like, probably, like, 17 years old, man. Like, dropped out of high school, like, didn't finish, was like, this is what I'm going to do. There I left. You go. So, I don't know. Fast forward, I guess. I don't want to get too into, like, Warp Tour and all that stuff. <laughs> I'm here. I don't know. I started a company like three, four years ago called Canopy. Um, mm -hmm. We have uh, like an uh, episode-based show called 86 Degrees that we do. Um, you know, it just kind of goes over like just events, things like that. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, base it just around specifically like events, not more so like a daily vlog, but, you know, specific stuff. That's Correct. Going on. Um, so the first one we did was uh, uh, for South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a showcase with uh, J-Dot, uh, Lyrical Lemonade, some guys like that called Welcome to Japan. That was about two years ago now. Um, it was pretty cool. Um, we got Ski Mask, uh, Ugly God on there, uh, Chapo, Warhol SS, uh, I don't know, man, too many to name, just a bunch, too bunch many. of cool guys. Um, that was real fun. I uh, got to work with a lot of those dudes. Uh, Smoke Perp, did some stuff for him. He's in the episode. Um, so, yeah, did all that. And then now we're just kind of, you know, riding off that a little bit, uh, planning some stuff out. We got a cool launch coming in 2019. I won't go too far into it, uh, but we got some stuff you know, coming out to Melrose. You'll see. Um, but... Yeah, so, and then now, all that's kind of going, started going back to making some music, that's where the Taze Not Dead thing came from, just started doing that, and now I'm making music. <laughs> well, sweet, so you said that you were from the Dayton area, so what was it like growing up in Dayton? It was, it was cool, man, like, I, I'm not gonna front, you know, like, a lot of people want to come off like, man, I had this, you know, crazy rough childhood mm -hmm. growing up, I'm from the hood, I'm from the states, yeah. I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm saying, I'm, uh, I'm from, like, a real small suburb out there, man, like, I did, uh, up until probably, like, my, uh, junior year of high school I did like a design media class kind of thing which is probably where like a lot of the you know, okay. stuff started started getting my graphic design background things like that um, yeah so it, it was weird man it, it was cool kind of growing up it wasn't like too bad uh, it was kind of weird it's a weird I don't know how to say it uh, vibe out there just because it's you know you got the hood and you got the suburbs and they're real Correct. close to each other so there's a lot of intermingling and stuff like that um, but it was, yeah it was definitely not bad um it's a nice little town, I guess. Uh, I don't know, but it's kind of weird now growing up because it's actually a lot of people say it's like the worst, like one of the worst cities. Yeah, in, the, it's yeah. been hit with some. Yeah. We won't get too far yeah. into that, but some bad stuff. So, but yeah, so it's sad seeing some of that stuff. But other than that, it was not bad growing up, man. So you're out in LA a lot. So what's the transition like going from Dayton to the LA scene? Uh, pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, growing up like somewhere like Dayton, you know, then I don't really got stuff like that. Um, and then going out there and just seeing like the vast amount of opportunity just Correct. everywhere just, everyone's doing something it's kind of crazy because it's, it's easier coming from a small town and you know you say like oh i'm you know going out south by southwest or i'm going on tour you know everybody yes. there's that's mind-blowing to them mm -hmm. um, and then going out to la it's just you know that's what everyone's doing so you gotta really like push yourself harder to stand out exactly with yeah because it's, you know, the L.A. scene has already been established for what it is. You know, the music scene, the fashion, the art, you know, the whole the whole Kit Kat and Caboodle, for yeah. say, of what it is compared to the Ohio scene. So you really have to kind of fight harder to gain a spot there compared to Ohio, correct, yeah, would you say? Absolutely. That's 100 percent right. 100%. Would you say that you see Ohio starting to kind of get that competitive edge in the music, art, fashion, culture scene? Yeah, definitely, man. I, I definitely don't want to say, like, people here work hard, man. Like, I have so much respect for everybody around here, like, everyone local, man. Like, you guys had Major on here the other Correct. day. Correct, yeah. It. Like, uh, Savion's local engineer, dude, he's, he's killing it, man. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of the Breathing Backwards, those dudes, Andy and Brody, yep. man. They're killing it, like, absolutely just killing that scene. Mm -hmm. I've done some songs with them. They're killing it. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, people work hard out here. Like, there's no joke about it. I mean, we just saw now Bone Thugs and Harmony just was featured on Wiz Khalifa's tape, yeah, so they're out yeah. of Ohio as well, too. So there's lots of lots of actually big talent coming out from Ohio. So going back to the South by Southwest uh, campaign that you did, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit more about that. You got yeah. to work with Cole Bennett, which is a huge, huge um, 
you know, staple in the music industry for Lyrical Lemonade. Yeah. Um, you worked with people like Ski Mask. You worked with people like Smoke Perp. Mm -hmm. So kind of what was that journey like for you? Uh, it was pretty cool, man. It, like, I really hadn't done anything in this industry when I went out there and did that. So it was kind of weird to, like, be thrown into that. Correct. And, again, this was two years ago. So, like, this was, like, right as Lyrical Lemonade and Cole was starting to grab their, you know, big upbringing. Yes. Ski Mask and them were still considered underground artists. Mm -hmm. So... It was really cool just being like thrown into that and just immediately uh, over the next two years just seeing that whole uprise of all this of them growing yeah, and really blowing up to what they are growing, yeah and it, it was cool man it was cool working with them out there um i mean it was definitely there were huge sold out shows like smoke Purp was out there killed it ski mask out there killed it uh cole amazing always like kills it with shows um but yeah man i don't know cole's cool man like linking with him doing work with him i didn't actually have to interact with cole too much other than just kind of like through passing and talking and whatnot Correct. but um it was cool man he's a super cool dude like he is super respectful like other people's hustle like I, I had my brand out there we had hoodies and he was like the whole weekend was wearing our brand and mm -hmm. hanging out and just kind of talking to him about like our similar upbringings like doing high school media classes yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that and like it was cool man and dude's just like it, I want to say it's like amazing to see how like much he's grown and how he literally is one of the biggest influencers yes. in this industry today but Dude, it's not surprising to me. He has such a huge impact on it. Yeah. Um, so what would you say your relationship with those kind of guys are? Now, you know, seeing them go from the underground scene to now literally, like, everyone knows their name now. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It's hard to say. Like, my personal, like, uh, relationship with them, I would say, is, like, uh, I mean, even though, like, I've worked with them in the past, dude, I'm still, like, I'm inspired by them for real, man. Yeah. Like, it's just cool to see, like, them do those things. And, like, really, like, when I was out there, I feel like a lot of us didn't really know what we were doing because it wasn't mm -hmm. really a thing yet. And then now, like, Cole's developed Lyrical Lemonade into what it is, and now it's a whole subgenre. It's a whole industry. It's a whole scene. And now it's kind of like they've established a place for other people, you, me, whoever, to kind of come in and break out into this new market. You know? Correct. So it's cool. Hell yeah. So now you kind of talked about your brand um, canopy, correct? Yeah. So give us a little backstory about that, where that started, and kind of the whole story with canopy. Yeah. So the canopy started a long time ago, way before I was in any of this stuff. It was actually going to be um, a shop in Dayton okay. for like outdoors gear. Oh. Yeah, so totally off the board. <laughs> um, and I did like a Kickstarter for it, and we raised like $30,000 wow. for it. Um, based off of I rebuilt like a motorcycle here in Dayton you yeah. did the Kickstarter yep wow and I, uh, I raffled off a motorcycle and I sold the raffle tickets that was what you got for donating the Kickstarter and we raised like thirty thousand dollars and then we're like man this is crazy like I can't believe we did it we're all wow. real excited and we get an email from Kickstarter saying that raffle tickets are against the terms of service oh, everybody okay. gets refunded and then we wow. just had to give it up so we didn't do anything for a long time because that was kind of discouraging. And as I started to get back into this and kind of started getting back into business, I picked it back up and I was like, the canopy was always what I was going to do. Correct. I love the name. And I just kind of applied it to what I was doing at the time. And it just sort of turned into like a, a brand and a media mogul. So what do you see as the future goes for Canopy? What's some future projects that you guys got? Or is that kind of on the uh, low still? Not, not necessarily. Um, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out in 2019. Um, we've been out in uh, Los Angeles for a little, the past month or so, off and on, um, planning a lot of stuff. Um, I'm trying to think about what all I can yeah. talk about for real. Um, there's definitely going to be a new merch drop uh, coming relatively soon, probably like winter, um, pre-2019 to kind of build up to that. Um, may or may not see a location out there. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. Um, Keeping it on the low. It's not, Got it. it's not locked in yet, but um, that's the idea essentially, um, is we're going to have a nice little store out there, um, hopefully to kind of touch home base. And uh, yeah, we've been meeting with a lot of people out there, man, a lot of uh, producers, a lot of engineers. I can't, can't say any names, but um, yeah, we got some cool stuff coming. <laughs> Last couple questions here. Now, um, would you say that Ohio's kind of influenced your style with everything, you know, music related, your business related? Do you feel like that Ohio theme has influenced you more or more of the LA vibe? Um, I would say both um just being because like i want to say the ohio thing influences me a lot just because of my upbringing and like Correct. my uh cousin was really close with a lot of bands at the time like yes. uh, growing up like the Delaware's prada hawthorne heights like bands like that so 
Ohio definitely influenced me in that sense. Like they gave me the whole emo phase. Like, like yeah, walking through my yep, space. Yep, that's kind of yep. what you know, made me who I am today. But I definitely feel like you know nowadays, just like Melrose in LA is definitely like. I mean, I went out there and dropped like five grand just on clothes alone because so I was it, just like, that's everything I'm looking for. So. So it's just kind of your new home now. Yeah, like, totally. I feel that. Totally. So last question here. You now have started getting into the rap game yourself. You yeah. know, you have a song out with Major Zoe. We had Major Zoe here in the studio. Tell us a little bit about that. Any collaborations, projects, or anything like that that you can tell us about your new kind of journey you're taking yeah, on. Yeah, totally. So, started making music probably like two, three months ago. Um, me and Major did two songs together. Um, we dropped those. Dude, Shout out Major Zoe. Yeah, totally. Major's killing it. Um, I did, just dropped another one called Game Day. Uh, I did with the cartel. There's some good dudes that are from Columbus. They're real cool. Um, but yeah, we've definitely got some cool stuff coming up. Um, I got that's exciting. I'm, I guess I could say something about it, but I got uh, some stuff going on with uh, some of the Zanarchy guys. I'm not going to say oh. who specifically. Um, okay, they're overseas right now, but as soon as they get back, uh, we've made plans to link up. So definitely some cool oh, stuff yeah. coming with that. Um, and I know we're definitely shooting a music video soon. Uh, shout out Bang Belly, he kills it. Um, there you super go. Super good, super good local dude. Um, but yeah, so just kind of kind of easing into it. It ended up being something I. Didn't even think I would really take that seriously, and then I ended up like loving making music again. There you so go. Keeping with it, and yeah, so there's a lot of cool stuff coming. There you go. Yeah. Finding out what you're passionate about. Well, guys, that about wraps it up here. We have Tay's Not Dead on here. Where can they check you out, my dude? Um, so SoundCloud, Tay's Not Dead X. Um, Instagram, Tay's Not Dead X. Twitter, Tay's Not Dead, no X. <laughs> There you go. Make sure to go check him out, guys. I really appreciate having him on. I hope you guys enjoyed. He's got a lot going for him. Make sure to go check out his brand, The Canopy, as well. Go check out all his work. Go check out the song with Major Zoe. And as always, go check out Ground Sounds as well. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Go check out the website. You know what it is, guys. We're back here in the Columbus area grinding. We're helping everyone out. So really appreciate you guys. I appreciate you coming yeah, on, Tay. Right. That was right. awesome. So again, guys, make sure to stay tuned, and we out. Peace. I'm Tay's Not Dead. You're watching Ground Sounds.